And the imagery that I want to share with you is one that will help you understand the larger concept of Sult al Asr. Imagine with me that you are drowning, that you're drowning, and you are unconscious. Two things you're drowning and you're unconscious. Do you have a lot of time? If you're drowning and you're unconscious, do you have a lot of time? No, you don't have a lot of time. Which means there, your time is running out. And you know in Arabic, what word is used for when time is running out? The, time, the word for that is al-asr. Al-asr literally means time that is running out. It's the last part of the day when the day is running out. It's time of asr prayer. Okay? Asr literally comes from asir, juice that is squeezed out. Time that's being squeezed out of your hands. You know, asr al-thawba even it's used. That you know, you take a coal, a cloth that is drenched in water, and when you squish it like this, all the water comes out. Asr as a verb is used like that. Right? To squeeze it out. So Allah talks about this time. Your time you're drowning, you're, you're unconscious, your time is running out. What's the first thing you need to do to be able to survive if you're in that position? What, if you hope to survive, what's the first thing you're going to need? What do you think? Wake up. That's the first thing you're going to need. If you keep, you're unconscious, then you're finished. The very first condition has to be you have to wake up. And even if you were in the most wonderful dream, and in your dream you were enjoying the greatest success, you're driving, you're driving a Ferrari down, you know, this, you know, they have these car commercials with the hills and the highways on the side, the water on the other side, right? You're in one of those cars, the, top, top, drop is, the, the top's been dropped off, and you're just cruising along the highway, enjoying life, that's your dream. But when you wake up, what do you realize? You're drowning. You're underwater. That's the first condition, you have to wake up. Once you do wake up, you say, oh man, this is a nasty reality, and I was enjoying such a good dream, I should go back to sleep. If you do that, what kind of person would you be? Insane. You'd be insane. Or someone at least who has no courage to accept reality. Because they found reality to be very difficult, they decided they're gonna put themselves back to sleep even though they woke up. Does this person, if he drowned, can he blame anybody else? The one who woke up and went back to sleep? You think? Someone who never woke up, maybe, right? But the one who woke up said, mm, this is not good. And they went back to sleep. They have no one to blame but who? Themselves. They have no one to blame but themselves. Now, let's imagine that they did wake up. What do you have to do next? Oh, it's pretty bad, I'm drowning. Even if you don't know how to swim, will you not use every muscle in your body to make certain kinds of motions to go towards the surface? Wouldn't you do that? And you will make certain kinds of motions that make you go further down, and certain kinds of motions that will make you go up. And once you discover which ones help you go up, you will only do those, right? You will do those. In other words, the first thing was you have to wake up, the second was you have to swim. You have to do something to try to get to the surface. When you got to the surface, you gasped for air, and you got pulled back down. You got pulled back down. And you know what you, who you got pulled back down? You won't believe this. There's a chain around your foot, and your relative, your cousin, is sleeping. And he dragged you down. And now you're drowning because of your sleeping cousin. What do you have to do now? You gotta wake him up. And you're not even waking him up because you wanna save him. Who are you waking him up for? You're, maybe you wanna save him, maybe. Maybe you don't even like your cousin, I don't know. <laughs> right? But what's the point? The point is, you're trying to wake him up because if you don't wake him up, who's also gonna drown? Yourself. So you wake him up, and he says, man, I was driving a Ferrari, you woke me up for no reason, I'm going back to sleep. Forget you. Can you just say, okay, well I didn't like you anyway, suit yourself. Can't do that. If he goes to sleep again, what are you gonna do? No man, wake up, let's go, let's go, we, gotta, we, gotta, we can't give up. You can't not accept reality. And you have to keep trying to wake him up until he finally says, okay, fine, what do we do? He says, let's, you say to him, let's swim together. Both of you come up together. The third time, you both get pulled down by your grandmother, by your aunt, by your neighbor, by your son, by your daughter. Does the process continue? The process continue? There's a four-part process to this people surviving. The first was they had to wake up themselves. Then they had to try to swim. Then they had to tell other people that they're tied to, this is the truth. Let's go. And even if they got tired, and some of them, one of them said, man, I can't do this anymore. We've been doing this now over and over again. I don't know if I can do it anymore. And the other one says, no. 
We are all gonna survive together. You have to do this. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Keep going, keep going. You ever seen those kinds of movies where they're trying to escape from some army and one of them gets tired and says, I can't run anymore. What do the others do? Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. We can do this, we can do it. And they, they get him to run anyway, even though he thinks he can't run anymore. They, 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 they work with each other because their, their survival depends on each other. They work together desperately. What does Allah say at the end of this surah? First He says, إِنَّ الْإِنْسَانَ لَفِيهُ When Asr, first of all, time's running out. Then He says, إِنَّ الْإِنْسَانَ لَفِيهُ خُسْرَ I'll translate it, human beings are drowned in loss. You see the parallel? Human beings are drowned in loss. What's the exception? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ Those who believed. Believed what? Allah didn't say, آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَالْبَعْثِ بَعْدَ Nothing. He didn't mention anything. Even though all of those things are included. According to the siyaq of the surah, the context of the surah, what is the first thing these people have to believe? That they're in loss. That they're drowning. And if they do come to believe that, and they correct their iman, What's necessarily going to happen? They're going to swim and move upwards. How does Allah describe this action? وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ They do good things. They do things that help reconcile the situation. By the way, salih is an adjective here. صَالِحَاتِ جَمَعُ مُؤَنَّثْ سَانٍ Which is, literally means that which corrects something. Something was wrong and it corrects it. So they do actions that correct the situation. Literally like the guy trying to swim. But because they were tied to other people, what else did they have to do? وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ They had to tell the other the truth. And it's not even أَخْبَرُوا عَنِ They told them about the truth. No, no, no. They had to wake him up and let's go, let's go, we have to go. No matter, and over and over again. Tawasi even has takrar in it. It has repetition. Over and over again they said, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth. You know why? Because the people you're trying to save, even if you wake them up temporarily for 20 minutes, 30 minutes during a khutbah, guess what happens when the khutbah is done? They go back to sleep. They start drowning again. So what do you have to do? You have to go and wake them up again. Then they get sleepy again. Then you gotta wake them up again. This is tawasi bil haq. And you might get tired of doing it. You might become impatient. So Allah also adds, wa tawasaw bil sabr. You gotta keep doing it. Sabr means consistency, constancy, perseverance, patience. You gotta remain on point. You gotta keep doing this. Because your survival depends on it. In the end, if you do all of these things, but you have no patience, and you give up, you, you drown too. So even if you had iman, and you had good deeds, and you told people about the truth, but you didn't have sabr, you still drown. So how many conditions do you have to fulfill to survive? All four. All four conditions are required. They're, they're critical and they're necessary. Which is why there's a wa in between them. You see the logical progression from iman to amil salihat, to tawasul bil haq, to tawasul bil Beautifully articulated in this surah.